Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about LiPos. And uh, the question is, is this a battery or is this a bomb? And the answer to that question is both. Uh, these are highly dangerous batteries and they have to be treated with respect, they have to be treated with care, they have to be dealt with properly or very bad things can happen. And when I say bad things, I'm going to show you here a little photo sequence of a very small LiPo. This is probably a 300 milliamp, uh, probably a 3S battery. It's the typical small drone size flight pack exploding. And I'm just showing you a couple frames of the explosion. And as you can see, it has an initial very large explosion as one or two of the cells go up and then you have the sympathetic explosion of the second cell that gets ruptured after the initial explosion and you get a secondary explosion and as you can see there are small molten fragments of metal flying through the air. This is not something you want to have happen in your home. And just a couple of weeks ago, a home near me burnt to the ground. Well, let me just read you a little bit of information here. The county fire marshal determined a faulty lithium ion battery in a remote controlled car started the fire. The fire displaced a family of four, causing almost $1 million in damage. In other words, the home and all of their property and probably at least one vehicle. This occurred in the garage, a fairly benign area. It's not like it was on a couch or near drapes or something like that. These things really go up dramatically. I'm going to read you a little more information here. This is from an article on thoughtco.com and it's uh, written by Anne Marie Helmstein, PhD. Lithium battery consists of two electrodes separated by an electrolyte. Typically the battery batteries transfer electrical charge from a lithium metal cathode through an electrolyte consisting of an organic solvent containing lithium salts over a carbon anode. The specifics depend on the battery, but lithium ion batteries usually contain a metal coil and a flammable lithium ion fluid. Teeny metal fragments float in the liquid. The contents of the battery are under pressure, so if a metal fragment punctures a partition that keeps the components separated, or the battery itself is punctured, the lithium reacts with the water in the air vigorously, yeah, very vigorously, generating high heat and sometimes producing a fire. If the battery is damaged and a partition is punctured, a short occurs. This spark can ignite the highly reactive lithium. Another possibility is that the battery can heat to the point of thermal runaway. Here, the heat of the contents exerts pressure on the battery, potentially producing an explosion. In other words, you're overcharging your batteries and overheating them, or you're keeping them in a, a hot area, such as a car or in direct sunlight. Uh, here's another little blurb from a professional forensic investigation firm. They identify the primary causes of lipo failure as defects to batteries and or charging equipment, battery damage, improper charging, as in other words, pilot error. So here are just some hard fast rules I wrote up on how to treat your lipos. Okay, rule number one, never charge lipos unattended. Don't put them on the charger and split. That's apparently what these people did who had their house burned down. Um, I don't know if it was an adult or a kid who did this, um, but they plugged in this car. Um, apparently the battery's in the car. That's another big no-no. Don't always take your batteries out of the car and they should be in a fireproof bag when you're charging them. Um, 
Buy quality LiPo batteries. Always balance charge your LiPo batteries. That's very important. You want to keep that, uh, that voltage as close as possible between the multiple cells in the battery pack. Uh, always discharge your batteries to a storage voltage of 3.8 volts per cell. Now, this is one of the reasons you want to get a good charger. You want to make sure that any charger you buy has that option to do a storage charge. In other words, it will monitor each cell and it's basically doing a reverse balance charge. It depends on the state of the battery. For example, if you've, uh, if you've run the battery down fairly low, it's going to be charging up to 3.8 volts from wherever it was. If the battery was fully charged, uh, in the case of like you've gone to the races and you didn't use the battery, um, you were going to run or you were going to you know, go outside and all of a sudden it's raining. Okay, you got a fully charged battery. Don't leave it charged if you're not going to be using it within a handful of hours or certainly within 24 hours at most. You want to put that on a storage discharge and it will bring the battery down so the cells are level at 3.8 volts. Rule number five. Store and charge your batteries in fireproof bags. Unless the battery is in use, it should be in a fireproof bag away from anything that can catch fire. That's just a general good rule of thumb. Um, I always buy multiple sets of the fireproof bags. Um, they're not expensive. I try to buy them in you know, four packs, eight packs on Amazon, so it brings the price down a little bit. And every single LiPo I have is inside a lipo storage bag a fireproof bag usually those are themselves stored in a larger fireproof bag um, uh, let's see uh, number six do not store lipos at high temperatures such as in a hot car or direct sunlight we went over that and last but not least do not overcharge your your lipos um, it, it's just not worth that little bit of extra punch off the line that you think you may be getting um, if you're not a professional racer, it's, it's just simply not, you know, the juice isn't worth the squeeze, you know. You want a million dollars worth of damage, you want, you know, you want to explain to your wife that you've destroyed all of your worldly possessions and burnt the house down because you were screwing around with your lipos trying to get your car to go a little faster. Mm. If you're a young guy, you certainly don't want to have that conversation with your parents. Most chargers are going to give you multiple options a, a good charger uh, something along I don't know if this is a great charger it's a decent charger um, it's got the settings that you need for example um, you know here are, I'll just go through the modes for you okay balance discharge storage fast charge charge and we're back to balance again I basically use two modes I balance charge and I storage that's it um, I never fast charge. I suppose if I was in a pinch at a race and I needed to, you know, top off a cell uh, so I, I could, uh, you know, um, make a heat in time or whatever, I might run fast charge on it. Doing a balanced charge on the way up, uh, don't press the amperage either. Some people, you know, want to try to get every little extra bit out of your battery. Um, is, is it worth wrecking a, a $50 to $100 battery? prematurely. Um, I don't think it's worth it, and I don't think there's that much extra performance to be had. I mean, it just doesn't seem like it's worthwhile. Uh, I know that there are people who would argue that, but I'm not racing for money. I'm not a professional. I'm not a team driver. I don't have a budget where I can, you know, buy 20, 30 batteries and go through each of them to see which has that extra little bit of voltage in it just not worth it for me. I want my batteries to last. I want them to be usable for a long time. Um, they are an, uh, a big investment um, and uh, I try to take care of them. I want to make sure that they're not a hazard to me and my wife. Um, I don't want them to cause a, a massive loss and a big insurance claim to go with it where I look like an idiot because I was, you know, abusing my batteries with over volting and over over amp charging and and have them swell up and go bang so don't be that guy you know make your batteries last uh, enjoy, it definitely will make the hobby much more enjoyable 
you've seen the the small battery exploding that's a three cell 300 milliamp imagine a 7000 4s or 6s battery something like this going up in your house that would be catastrophic so um and if you're there you could be badly injured so um, if your battery starts, if it starts to suddenly swell, if you hear a hissing sound like gas escaping rapidly, get out. Um, go get a fire extinguisher. Don't try to dump water on this. Um, chances are you're just going to make it a lot worse. Um, and having, if you've got, you know, a nice little hobby room with all your goodies, um, I have a fire extinguisher right over there always just in case you never know what could happen you know soldering accident whatever um, having a, a good fire extinguisher make sure it's charged um, if it sits for more than a year or two without having to be used you know read, read the manufacturers recommendations but you probably want to replace it and uh, get another one they're not that expensive and it's cheap insurance because yeah you never need it till you need it and when you do you really want it so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little bit about lipos. Uh, I've given you a little bit of the science behind them and uh, some interesting images of the destruction they can cause. So uh, don't be that guy.